Can you tell me a story? Oh, we have to be real quiet. But when I'm scared, Mommy tells me a story. Well, your mommy knows all the stories. I don't know any good stories. Can I tell you a story? Okay. But you have to whisper. Okay? Like this. Yeah. Just. Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin, I'm a film critic, and you're watching the Armchair Tour. It's an ongoing video series where I like to talk about old movies, new movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. If you're the person who likes film culture and picking apart movies, please consider subscribing. Keeping along with the Spooktoberfest theme and the horror movie stuff that we've been doing on the channel this month, we are going to be reviewing Tales from the Hood 3, which just came out like a week ago or so on Amazon Prime and like no one told me. Like I just discovered this on accident. It's the sort of movie I thought more people would want to know about or have seen, but like literally it's like really, really under the radar at the moment. But I watched it and I want to talk about it. Before we get into the movie, I do want to talk about the original Tales from the Hood, which is one of my favorite horror anthology movies. It's up there with like Creepshow and I guess probably like John Carpenter's Body Bags. Like it's a really good movie. The framing device is incredible. All the Insoi stories are pretty good. They sort of range from really, really fun and exciting to sort of watchable, but steeped in weird, older, black, conservative viewpoints. And I sort of think of it as a really powerful and unique exercise in genre. To this day, I think the film still holds such a sway over its fans because of a mixture of nostalgia and also merit. But two years ago, around the same time of the year, the film's original creative team of executive producer Spike Lee, directors Rusty Kundiev and Darren Scott, returned with Tales from the Hood 2, a movie that is so, so, so much worse. The wit and charm of the original film is completely steeped out, and all that's left is like these weird Black Mirror-esque morality tales that sort of gesture off screen at the hint of interesting racial commentary but stop just short of having anything real to say. They seem to take their cue from the worst impulses of the original film and just do that bigger and louder and more brash. Save for old man Francis L from Purple Rain being replaced in the Mr. Sims role from the original by actor Keith David who is actually a really really fun addition to the film. There's almost nothing else of value in the movie. It is really over the top and really bad. Yeah! The shit! Yeah. The doo-doo! The poopity pop! <laughs> And bad in a way that insults the original film and also you for ever thinking that they could be able to recreate this lightning in a bottle. Like, it's a really, really offensive and bad time. Which brings us to Tales from the Hood 3. I have to say, straight away, that Tales from the Hood 3 is, technically speaking, a better movie than Tales from the Hood 2. Tales from the Hood 3 is less offensive, it's less grotesque, it's less insulting, but it is also perfunctory to a fault. While none of the stories in Tales from the Hood 3 are quite as blunt or as bad as the Emmett Till short from 2 or the gollywog stuff, they're so harmless and straightforward that they honestly begin to feel like first draft passes of basic to the point of blandness horror stories. Like they are the barest hint of here is what a horror story and anthology should be like. The framing device this time around isn't so bad. It features Tony Todd, the legend, and a young girl running through the woods, running from what I think what are called the bad things. And Tony Todd's presence here is an immeasurable boon. The weight he brings to being in the movie at all really gives the proceedings the kind of like horror prestige that's sorely lacking after coming off of the second film. He's as much an immense presence as Clarence Williams III was in the first film, and as Keith David was in the second, but in his own unique Tony Todd kind of way. And the nature of this pairing brings a sense of urgency to the entire framing device that makes the entire film move a little bit faster than the last one, in a, in a good way. Once you can get over the fact that this is a movie that has a little girl telling these really weird, bloody, morality tale horror stories scared in the woods to the fucking candy man. But the stories themselves, well, they're fine. They're just fine. There's one about a dude haunted by the family whose gentrifying actions burned alive in the pursuit of economic expansion. Typical ghost story blended with vague political undertones. There's an interesting but underbaked body switching story involving a young singer and an older woman who famous passed by. Also, pretty well done, I suppose. There's also one so dumb and basic I had to look it up because I already forgot it while I was recording this video, involving a racist old man who lives inside a literal bubble. And the final story probably has the most visual style, but it's also the worst one. It's about a thief haunted and tortured over some sneakers he stole. This is your classic basic stand-in black criminal pull your pants up type mentality that you always hear about in like weird angry Republican stories, but it's like the main character of the story. The news literally calls him the punch and run bandit. It's like the most basic obvious version of a horror anthology anyone could have conceivably presented. And I've watched some like real shitty horror anthologies on Amazon Prime at 3 o'clock in the morning in my lifetime, okay? I'm not unfamiliar with this terrain, but here it's just this bare minimum level of quality. Even though the stories in this one are less outright shitty than the ones in Tales from the Hood 2, they're so vanilla that it's almost offensive in a different way. Maybe I'm fucked up for feeling this way, but I almost prefer the batshit insanity of Tales from the Hood 2. Even though I find it despicable and largely insulting, there's at least some choices being made there, 
It's a movie that goes really, really over the top, makes a lot of bad decisions, but it actually makes real creative decisions. Tales from the 2 was so extravagantly bad that I was almost impressed by what was on display. It was something I hated, and I never wanted to see it again, but while I was watching it, I was at least moved in some way, even if I was moved to, like, booing. Tales from the 3 just feels like a homework assignment that got turned in at the last possible minute. And if I'm being really honest with myself, if I have a choice between watching something that makes me angry and outraged and insulted versus something that makes me feel hollow and unengaged, I'd rather be triggered every single time than being bored. Also, I have to say the ending of this film's framing sequence is really, really underbaked and really boringly executed. It really encapsulates everything that I don't like about the entire movie. Everything that could happen, that we assume is going to happen in this movie, does happen in the simplest, most obvious way possible. It's really disappointing. I feel like as the creators behind this Urswell franchise begin to grow older, everything about the movie seems to give in more to these impulses of sort of older black conservative viewpoints where every story is basically like an elongated version of like the video game stuff from Spike Lee's Clockers. In some ways, the boogeyman in these stories essentially just become like bad blacks who are like getting their comeuppance. And their comeuppance always comes in exactly the most typically ironic way possible and never does it resonate or hit with any sort of like actual immediacy. It's just exactly what you think is gonna happen every single time. It feels like the worst part of the original film, the hardcore convert chapter that is like my least favorite part of the original movie. And it's like they've taken that kernel of an idea, of an approach, and stretch it out large for the new film. Honestly, at this point, if we ever do get a Tales from the Hood 4, which would be cool, I really hope that Cundi F. and Scott really hand the reins over to some newer, younger, fresher perspective having filmmakers. Because me personally, I'd rather not watch a black horror anthology that feels like it was executive produced by Congressman Jim Clyburn. That's me, that's my take on Tales from the Hood 3. I didn't hate it, I don't think it's like necessarily a really bad movie, I just think that it is so bland that I would rather be doing anything else, including rewatching Tales from the Hood 2 which is saying a lot. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you have subscribed, hit the little bell icon to get notifications when I've had new videos because they will have new videos coming out uh, across the next couple of weeks. I'm going to try to be as prolific as possible to maximize Spooptober. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that stuff. I hope everyone's staying safe. Have a great day.